Well, I think what what social media and apps in general do is they create arbitrage and they make it impossible for operators to try and segment different parts of the connection and charge different uses of it at different rates. Because what happens, you have a data connection, you can do any application or any service you like over that data connection. And so you see mobile operators shifting from having a segmented tariffing structure with a voice and an SMS and a data section to, or data label in effect, to um, integrated tariffs with voice, SMS and data all included in one category. And that obviously creates quite a lot of challenges. Firstly, just from ipso facto, if you change your, your entire tariff structure, that creates all sorts of disruption and scope for churn. But also you need to be careful about how you set um, maximum ARPUs. So if you move to um, you know, if you move to a tariff that has unlimited voice and one gig of data and then another tariff that has unlimited voice and two gig of data, then all of the people who are using very large amounts of minutes will go on to one or other of these unlimited tariffs. And so in effect, you can cap, you can cap your total ARPU um, and lose revenue from your highest value customers. So there's a lot of kind of careful management and um, coordination issues for mobile operators in making that transition. And of course, if you don't do anything about it at all, then your SMS revenue can disappear more or less overnight, and that's what's happened to a certain number of European markets. Um, well, that's kind of a big question. Um, I think the fundamental difference between markets is um, pricing and um, customer um, customers' disposable income. And so that tends to drive everything else. And so in relatively low income markets, different kinds of handsets get bought to um, higher income markets. And higher income markets have, tend to have a subsidy model, whether that's 50% of the base in Europe or 90% of the base in the US. And that drives a different churn behavior, different usage behavior, different handset purchasing behavior, and therefore different penetration of apps and mobile platforms and so on. Whereas um, as you go to lower income, then you have more focus on price sensitivity and a lot more of the focus is on how can you make money from a five euro ARP, a five dollar ARP customer or a one dollar ARP customer and um, how do you provide them with a data plan, how do you service them, what kind of operating structure do you need in that environment. Well, I think it's pretty clear that we're going to see more and more domestic Chinese brands trying to go international and domestic Chinese manufacturers trying to create brands of their own. And you can see that most obviously with Xiaomi at the moment, but there are half a dozen to a dozen other companies that are also trying to do the same thing. And then you have a lot of other companies that aren't even really trying to create a brand in their, on their own right, they're just trying to go international. And they're doing that with... Um, product that looks to customers as though it's half the price of what they would get from a traditional brand. Um, and so all, all of these companies are trying to do is work out the right route to market, the right com com um, countries that they can sell in, and the right balance of price versus um, build quality and feature set in order to appeal to customers in those markets. And so very obviously, if you're trying to sell a handset in India, um, you've got 10 different types of customer and 10 different types of market. And then if you look at Indonesia or Vietnam or China or um, Burma, you all have, mar you have markets that have very different characteristics, different routes to market. And so as the Chinese go international, they, they discover a much more complex landscape that they have to, do, that they have to um, navigate. And so they start looking for local partners. Well, I think it has great symbolic value. Um, I mean, it points to the resolution of mobile operators as being utilities, an effect of being water companies. And it's very telling that Vodafone is giving the great majority of the cash it's got for Verizon Wireless back to shareholders. It's not going out and spending $100 billion buying assets, it's giving it to shareholders. And so I think the days of people building vast global empires of mobile operators are kind of coming to an end now. I think Microsoft, Nokia, well, 
Depends what you think. If, if, if this hadn't happened, it's quite possible that Nokia would have gone out of the smartphone business. And so for Microsoft, this was clearly a necessary but insu necessary step. But it's probably also an insufficient step because nothing that's happened is going to make people more likely to buy Windows phones. And nothing that's happened changes the structural problem that Nokia and every other feature phone manufacturer has, which is, you know, Right now, about half of sales are feature phones, but that's falling fast. And of course, the best ones are converting to smart fastest. So, so the value in the smart in the feature phone business is really um, slipping away very quickly, and hence the value in Nokia's feature phone business as well. So the question for the future is: It's not so much that Nokia is going to disappear, but that is it going to be back on the market with with really credible competitive products? We're starting to see Windows Phone at you know getting down close to $100, at which point it becomes an interesting product in emerging markets and in middle-income markets. But it's still not that competitive when you look at the flood of Android products that's on the market at the same price or lower. So I think Nokia has a real struggle to remain relevant in this market. Um, Microsoft, of course, has never really been relevant, and it still isn't really relevant. And so... You know, it, it, it's certainly the end of one era. It's an open question whether it's the beginning of another or whether we all see Microsoft simply retreating from this space entirely.